I figured I'll have my pole dancing song to get everybody worked up. Because if you all are really good and laugh at everything I say, I will award you with my body. <laughs> and it is this body that is making the money, let me tell you. So are you ready, Ted XKL, to become Ted Sex KL? <laughs> Very good. I can see some men already. Yes! <laughs> Finally! Tits! Okay. <laughs> I love them. I always say God give you two up here so you can show people. If not, he will give you two somewhere else. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I am, yes, the infamous Joanne Kampopo. For those of you who are younger, your parents may have said that they sneaked into Boom Boom Room, <laughs> right? When we were much younger to watch me tell dirty joke, okay? <laughs> I still do tell dirty jokes. Apparently, it works, you know? So let me see. This is my first time I ever did slides. You know, they say, Joanne, you have to do slides. I say, the only slide I do is in the bedroom, you know? <laughs> so, so before this, uh, this conference, I was like, oh my God, I have to do slides. I don't even know how to do PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> I mean, like, usually just go up and talk cock, you know? <laughs> Amazingly, it works. <laughs> okay, so it is from uh, funny to money because I believe if you make people laugh, it is easier for them to give you money. <laughs> and that's always my philosophy. <laughs> All right, so of course, you know, growing up as a very large child, you know, when I became adulthood and I realized with lots of makeup, lots of wigs, eyelash, I can look sexier. I, of course, take lots of sexy pictures. <laughs> this was a couple of years ago when I was like, uh, yeah, I lost 10 kgs. Now I put them all back on. Huh? So I'm just going to, hey, hello. See, I know technology and me, it doesn't work. That's why I always try to have an IT boyfriend. It doesn't work as well because they bore me to death. And of course, last but not least, where am I supposed to point this thing? <laughs> okay, that's the most recent one uh, last year. So girls, don't worry for those of you who feel conscious about taking sexy pictures. If I can look like that, you can look like that, okay? Okay, let me tell you a little history about... <laughs> I am a stand-up comedian. I am an actor. I also am an Esquire contributor for two years. Amazingly, they have not dropped me yet. Every month, I write about relationship and sex. I try, la, I try, because you know, Malaysia, you can't go over. Uh, I'm also lady boss of my own events company called Tonic Creative Management. I am a theatre show producer, I'll tell you why later. And of course, right now, I'm on Red FM, but I just came from my sister company, Capital FM, where I was very happy for two years, fighting the women cause, and now I'm being dumped with two guys. It works because, you know, we women know when you put us with two guys Before anything, it'll just be my show Okay <laughs> Do not repeat that, yeah? Do not <laughs> This is another character called Supercom, which I will get to a bit later all right, and these are my five pillars of success And it is very easy, I did not take it from the internet I swear, I did this on my own. <laughs> yeah, okay. So talent, okay, for those of you who want to be in the entertainment industry. Okay, first thing first, huh? I, when I was growing up, I was a fat kid because I love to eat, okay? <laughs> my mother didn't have to do all those, you know, very nice things. <laughs> she didn't have to do anything. I ate. <laughs> oh boy, did I eat. <laughs> You know when the baby come out and parents feed the baby, the baby is like, oh, so cute, so cute. Then they keep feeding you and feeding you. At five years old, the cute kid is still okay because she's five, you know. When you reach eight years old, aunties get worried and they tell your mother, wow, quite fat. Ah. <laughs> Maybe don't feed her so much rice. 
You know how you've been growing up on it. Then at twelve, they get even more worried. Are you twelve year old already still fat? <laughs> how to find husband? <laughs> that that was the whole thing, right? Okay, so first thing first, fat, thin, not thin. You know, find your talent, whatever that you're good at. And sometimes you have to stumble a bit because I wanted to sing and dance and be like pussy cat doll. <laughs> I cannot sing. <laughs> I can carry a tune, but I can't sing. So find your talent, and you have to persevere as well. Because you know, a lot of times you get along the way. You say, "Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that." And a lot of people will, you know, when you tell them, "Oh, I want to go up there, go on stage, wear sexy clothes, have men drool at me," you know, and then they'll be like, "Sure." Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. So don't don't believe that because. You need to have perseverance and determination, and they both come together. Because perseverance, for the long run, okay. I have been in the entertainment business since I was 19 years old. I am now 41, minus that, and that is how long I have been in entertainment. Not as long as Yasmin Yusuf. She's one of my mentors, seriously. So persevere, okay? Persevere because it will happen. Sometimes it won't happen immediately. You know, one thing about young people, I, I, I sometimes feel that when you want to do something and after a couple of years it doesn't happen, you give up. Don't give up because sometimes it's just not your time. You've got to wait for the stars to be aligned. I know it may seem superstitious like that, you know, and no amount of money you spend on BOMO is going to work, okay? <laughs> Sometimes you just need to wait for the stars to be aligned and then it will all happen, okay? So you got to have patience. And you know what Yasmin was saying? That I have the biggest balls in Malaysia. I do agree. But right now, I tell everyone, don't grow some balls. Grow a V. You all know what a V is, right? I don't have to say that. <laughs> Okay, in true form from one of my favorite golden girls, Betty White said, I don't understand why people just tell everybody, grow some balls, because balls are sensitive and weak. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That's not the punchline. Grow a vagina, because these things can take a pounding. So to all the girls tonight, every one of you, and even you, boy, <laughs> grow a vagina. <laughs> Alright, so all is very simple. Okay, this is one of the few pictures I have of my past. As you can see, even at age 10... I really don't know how old I am. I think I'm six. Huh? I was wearing already a little tiara. So I was born in Johor, but I always tell people that I'm a Penang girl because my father's from Penang, my mom's from Singapore, and we grew up in Penang, and I've always felt this love for Penang Island. What's the Hokkien Nang? And I always say, Penang girls are the best girls because they are hums up and they have big tete at the same time. <laughs> That's the best. That's why our char kway teow is still the best. <laughs> All right? So, my father was John Cum, and he was the editor of New Straits Time. In, he was the editor in every place that we moved, in Penang, in Ipoh. I was last stationed in Johor before he passed on. He was the regional editor of Southern Region. Uh, I was very proud of him. He was never really proud of me because he never saw the fame and all that. He passed away when I was 16, SRP. It was... Uh, it was a very hard time because we were living in Ipoh and I was from MGS Ipoh and halfway through... Do we have any MGS girls here? Got? MGS Ipoh? Yes? All shy already. Okay, never mind. <laughs> if a minute, don't give me that clock. Slap you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take my bloody time. They're tired, they can go out. <laughs> so yeah, I'm on, I'm on a roll. Okay, so... <laughs> So we were moving to Johor Bahru, right? At age 16 from MGS Ipo, all girls school. They dumped me in Johor Bahru in a co ed school at 16. <laughs> Imagine the insecurity that I had. Number one, I was fat. Number two, I had lots of pimple. 
Number three, I was the only Chinese girl that had curly hair like Negro like that. <laughs> Plus, you know, I didn't like to wash my hair so they were a bit oily. <laughs> I wasn't wearing, there's no such thing as contact lens, so I have glasses. And because parents will buy the cheapest one for your uh, children at that time, not like now. Huh? Now my daughter demand I want Hello Kitty. I'm like, hello, like that. But I give her Hello Kitty anyway. <laughs> Just like this one. So, so I was ugly, trust me. Now, my mother was a housewife that who loved to enter me and my sister in all this competition. As you can see, I was Miss Chinatown at the age of six. <laughs> my sister was a Hawaiian girl, but I never won. I always get second place because she was younger, so she got all the prize. <laughs> see, she dressed like that, bikini like that, uh, with a straw skirt, get the prize. I had to wear high heels, you know. Okay, so I grew up, honestly, very geeky. And, and, you know, I was very shy with boys. Seriously. Even when I started Boom Boom Room, I was telling all these dirty jokes, but I, internally, I was still a virgin. Seriously. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously, I was still a virgin, but I was telling people all how to... How, how, to, how to smoke cigarettes that weren't cigarettes, you know? <laughs> okay? So, I mean, who knew, who knew for a girl who grew up like that, who used to be so shy with boys, now I can make men blush by just stepping on stage and looking like this. Right or not? <laughs> okay, so that was my past. Okay, then came Harper Villa, which that's where I found that I could make people laugh, that I could be funny, that, hey, maybe I don't have to be a miserable nurse or something like that. <laughs> I mean, no, no, okay, I'll tell you why. Because it was either going to be a performer in Harper Villa or going to be a nurse in Singapore General Hospital. And I went and did both, and the thing that came back was performer. So I told my ma, I know you want me to be a nurse, but unfortunately, they must have laughed at me because they said no, and this one said yes. So no choice, and that was the beginning of everything. Now in Harpa, I was Tia Sanku, which is the matchmaker. As you can see, I'm here with my three daughters trying to sell them, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and but what I learned in Harpa was very important that up to today, I have used in all my stand-up co comedy shows. In fact, in all my uh, entertainment shows and also in all my theatre as well, I learned how to interact with all of you, you know? Hey, hello, Chaba. <laughs> I talking, you tweeting. <laughs> you lucky, you girl, huh? If it was him, I'd slap with the tete already. <laughs> I learned how to handle impromptu situations like that. <laughs> I learned how to have the gift of the gap with witty comebacks as well. This is all not planned or scripted. Eh? And the best part is the ability to make people laugh. And you know, it's the one thing that kept me going doing this. You know, I've been doing this for 20 over years. And it's because the audience laughed and that's why I stayed on. You know, so really I have to thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> These are just some of the pictures of the roles I had in Harpa Villa. As you can see, I am Mother Earth as well. And if you look closely, that is Kuma on this. Yeah, so that's where I met Kuma. And the next phase of my entertainment life came about. Okay, this is the uh, Hapa Villa. Can you guess which one is me? Do you see it? I know it's a bit different. That, 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 the red one down there. And then I went into Boom Boom Room. Of course, all the Boom Boom Room. Boom Boom Room Singapore, the apprentice years. I also I opened up Boom Boom Kuala Lumpur, and that's where I shot into stardom. Thank <laughs> Yasmin used to sneak in to see me because she was underage also. <laughs> and of course, I did Penang. Now, Kumar was, I guess, my mentor and my saviour because I was in Harpa and I was enjoying, but... I wasn't going anywhere, and he said, you know what, come and do a guest spot in Boom Boom Room Singapore. At that time, Boom Boom Room was only six, seven months. So I did one skit with him. I was the Chinese contortionist. I didn't really contort. 
then he was like the MC. But I wrote out a script, and after that, the boss offered me the job. So I think it's very important for young people as well as, you know, you you never stop learning at 20, at 30, at 40, at 50. And if you find someone, a mentor, that you can have a heart-to-heart -heart relationship with and that can guide you through, find it. Because honestly, that person is like your saviour, okay? But sometimes mentor does not necessarily must be your best friend. Kuma wasn't my best friend. He was slightly mean in the beginning. But I think through that meanness, he taught me a lot. He taught me how to handle, how to develop my skills, how to tell a joke by making it personal. Like, instead of say, yo, one day a chicken, a rabbit, and a duck. <laughs> but something like, oh, one day my uncle and my uncle's friend and the mother, uh, something like that, okay? And then, uh, learning how to deliver a punchline as well, that was really very important. And the thing with stand-up comedy is there's no right, there's no wrong. You kind of need to find your food thing, you kind of need to get up on stage, and you kind of need to do it. And I think with every business, that is the key role. I mean, if you want it bad enough, you kind of need to get up on stage and do this in front of people. So that's how I worked, and I also feel, uh, this is just a few pictures of my Boom Boom Room days. Yes. Take lots of pictures when you look good. <laughs> okay, what stand-up comedy can teach you? This is very simple, which I think you can practice in anything that you do in your life. Now, in stand-up comedy, first thing first, you need to create a persona. I may not be this sexy Joanne Kam. I may be a very nerdy, a very shy. In fact, sometimes I still do get very shy, but when you're bringing yourself up to the people, always find that persona that sells you, whatever it may be, okay? Then you need to practice. You need to have your confidence. You need to set up your jokes so you know where it's going. And then you need to deliver the punchline and you need to be able to handle hecklers. And if all that works out, then your joke and your set would kill. In stand-up comedy, if you do really well, it means you kill. If you didn't do well, it means you bomb. So what you can do for your business is exactly the same. This one also I didn't take from the internet. <laughs> I swear to you, this one my own. Huh? Create a persona, brand your business. Whatever you want people to think your business is, yeah. You need to find that and you need to tell everybody what it is, okay? Practice, get organized, seriously. Business, you can't just go in blindly. You need to do your homework, you know? You need to get organized, make sure everything is right. Focus is very important because a lot of time people get distracted. You need to be consistent. The setup, like every joke that you, I create, the setup need to be almost the same because if not, the, the punchline will suffer, you won't get the laughs, then you won't get your kill, you were born. Okay, so be consistent with your setup. Then punchline, take risks. You know, not every joke is going to work. Sometimes people are going to go, sometimes people are going to go, what is the woman talking about? Shut up already. Okay, but you got to try. You got to try, you got to adjust the punchline until it works. And hecklers, you have to know your competitors. So it's as easy as that. And if you follow all that, you will have your success. I swear to you, this is the only other slides. <laughs> okay, Tonic Creative Management. I started this creative agency about in 2005. And this was the time also that I was pregnant with my daughter. But, uh, but what happened with this? No more already, so sorry. Two minutes. <laughs> Okay, two minutes. Can I have two minutes? Yes. Can I have more? Yes. Five minutes. <laughs> I swear, then you can go home. <laughs> okay, so we started Tonic Creative, uh, which is a creative management company, but also it does something else for me, I will tell you later. Okay, now I was also experimenting with other things. <laughs> Not that exactly. <laughs> uh, I fell in love with theatre, but I get casted in the same role. I was in Paul Loosley's pantomime as the empress. I was the wicked stepmother. I was one of the aunties in Broken Bridges. It was either, oh, we want a bitchy auntie called Joanne Kampopo. 
I was never, you know, the leading lady, you know. So I decided, you know what, fuck this. I'm going to do everything myself, okay? <laughs> so Tonic Creative gave me the opportunity and the platform to showcase what I want and make myself the leading lady. So we've come in your face, a musical cabaret. It was the start. Yes, come is my name. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> And oh, we did come fully loaded as well. <laughs> and we did The Good Body with Susan Lancaster as the director and the very beautiful Ida Narina, <laughs> my sister. And we did Taming of the Shoe. We took Shakespeare and we turned it into a Bollywood cabaret. No one has done this. I was very proud to say that it was the first of its kind in Malaysia. And the PR success that we gather, uh, multiple media channels across was almost more than one million. And we were, I'm very proud of this production. And of course, every girl wanted to wear a wedding dress, so I did, and I chose Tony Yusuf as my groom. See, when you do it for yourself, they're gonna not, you, you're going to say, yeah, I want Tony. Tony's going to be my husband. I'm going to wear the wedding dress, nothing else. <laughs> you can do this, right? You just have to do your own. And okay, I'm not going to go through any of them because it will take me too lo long time. But if you take a look at this, this was my personal mantras as I go along in my life. And if I'm going to go through any one of it, it's going to take too long. So you'll just see and study and take pictures. Huh? But <laughs> very short, create your own platform. If nobody's going to give you that role, honey, create that role for yourself. Do instead of talk. You have dreams, you've been talking to your friends, to your mother, to your father, to your children about it. Don't talk, get up there, do it. Prepare to solve problems because problems come and they come. If the problems don't come, something's wrong. <laughs> All right, so solve them, prepare to solve them. Every time you solve them, you know, you go and have an ice cream or something, you're like, yeah. So when problems come, when, when I have an event and there no problem comes, something is wrong. You know, there's no such thing. Invest in yourself. Look good. Feel good. Because when you look good, when you feel good, you know, you will inspire yourself and you will inspire other people as well. And we're not talking about the outer shell, but also the inner shell as well. All right? Understand the risks and your rewards. Prepare to take them. Don't be afraid, okay? And you got to have faith, humility as well. We are not the best at everything, but we can be better every time we take that risk, okay? Be the best also, and pacing, be true to yourself. This is very important. I have talked to celebrities when you ask them, uh, so what's going on? And they rattle on one and a half hour about what they are doing in other countries, and you're just there like, uh-huh, uh-huh. So we don't want to be that. Okay, we want to be real, all right? So talk to yourself and find out who you really are, who you want to be, and then extend, because that will be the best person that you can ever be. Okay, right now it's the Radio Waves. I am on the really, really late breakfast show. Of course, this one I'm publicity a bit. Huh? <laughs> Two to five, you got nothing to do in the office. You can download app and listen to me. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> we need callers. <laughs> I was on camera, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Yes, this was me and Zandra in my capital years. And now, yes, I'm with the boys. <laughs> Clap love for them. <laughs> okay, and oh, now it's the last one, I promise. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, after Joanne Kampopo, Cabaret, blah, 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 the dirty jokes, how do you then rebrand something like this? Well, super calm comes along. <laughs> This was actually a shot by Esquire, but I've taken it into a stand-up comedy showcase that I did a year with a couple of my friends. We've also, uh, under Esquire, did a six-month comic strip, which next year I'm going to, I'm going to, I am still, I'm looking for publishers, but we intend to publish a full-fledged graphic novel on Supercom. So that's next year. Thank you. This was a year ago, but in 2014, next year in March, I will have Super Come to the second coming. <laughs> of course, take down the dates. Four days only, buy ticket before they sell out. 
Okay? And this is my greatest accomplishment. My daughter Jade come. And I'm a single mother. I paid for everything, eh? everything. The doctors, everything. The maid, the dog, the guinea pig, everything. <laughs> And she's taken my name, Jade Kam. So I, if anything else, I really wish my father was here to see that. Yeah, you, you know, sometimes Chinese fathers, they are like, oh, daughter, there'll be someone else's you know, wife. And they won't carry the family name. I'm like, nah, 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 I did it. <laughs> I'm sure they don't think like that now. <laughs> and here's a treat for you. was for last year's Super Calm. So this year's Super Calm 2, we have Daphne Iking. We have a wonderful female comedian from Singapore called Sharu Chana. We have uh, me and we have Charmaine Oatman. We have Papi Zach as the MC. And instead of just an intro, you get a 10-minute very special Super Calm movie. So please come and support us. And also Super Calm, I think we're going to do it as an annual performance. And it is to promote women in comedy. So if you are funny and you want a spot for the next one, I'm the woman you see.